from the Holy Spirit. He says, this, he's your responsibility. Mm. And uh, that hit me hard as well. And I, you know, I told the Lord, Lord, I don't even know how to raise a child. So yeah. I needed him desperately. And so those are like two key early moments. I was obviously only 21 when you were born. So those are the early moments. There's a whole bunch of moments after that, but those were early moments to see that God, although gave me a great responsibility, never left me only to deal with that by myself. Dope, dope. I, I had an experience today where I had to say, God, help me with these kids. <laughs> so I know how that is, man. We getting it in. Yada the King Radio. Who else was uh, influential in your in your walk with God? Was there any people that you remember that um, when you came to God or even as you were walking on this path, some people that poured into you uh, as the topic of the day is that, that actually discipled you? Who would you say uh, shared that role in your life? Um, I was probably discipled by people that I went to church with later on. Uh, for a while, we didn't really have a church home, and we found a church home. We went to a local church, and probably the two people that had the most influence was uh, Pastor uh, Robert Evans. Uh, I remember hearing when we were going to church how how the uh, pastor of the church at that time thought so highly of Brother Evans, and I was longing to just be closer to the Lord, so I sought out a relationship with him, and then Pastor Greg Greg Wood was another person, uh, but uh, a, pa- a pastor, which is now Apostle uh, Dolores Kendrick, had a great influence in my life. Um, those are the local people, um, and those were people that we were around continually. So they, and of course, probably in later years, Pastor Nate Mullen was a big influence, and uh, let's see. I guess those are the main key people that were in that uh, influenced my life and sort of discipled me along the way. All right, that's what it is, man. So we getting it in, Yada the King Radio. We're gonna go to a music break here. Definitely tell somebody to check it out, man. Once again, the playlist will be on yadadakeen.com. Tell your friends and your family it's going down. Your home for banging music, uplifted Christ, and abundant life. I know the Lord coming like a thief in the night When the sun goes down, I'm gonna turn on the light I see the storm coming by, I fall from the sky But I hear all the nations cry Don't pass me by they make porn and they call it art. I feel like I'm swimming in a storm after Noah's Ark. Yeah, understated when he said I know it's hard. A taste of severity, watching bodies blow apart. Storm with an anger issue, Napoleon Bonaparte. Blame the gun, what about what's in the gun owner's heart? And organ donors call to the big leagues. Man down, treated like a few falling fig leaves. And I'm overwhelmed Spirits exit body cavity So make us sober like we hanging over hell Lord, you know us well We think we so free But we really can't breathe in the lower cell I'm talking belly of the earth status The hurt's tragic After the hurts and the worst madness Man, I'm feeling like the earth's backwards A murk axis The sacred gets dirt or the perch mattress It's the curse fashion Dispersed through the blood of Adam, the first sin was the first cast. It got my people spilling body fluids, DNA on naked bodies, all the pistols passion in the streets of havoc. They think this high is a piece of magic, so they mashing, but I think it's more than they can manage. I got peace, but they try to leave me out panicked, and they was found burnt to death while they out coming like a thief in the night when the sun goes down, I'm a turn on the light. I see the storm coming by a fall from the sky, but I hear all the nations cry. Don't pass me by. Ignoring the red flag 
Chipotle tag with bullets hot and seek in a zip bag. Kids eat candy wrapped up in a zigzag. Rappers with no play, but my God, they pin stabs. Cultural suicide, how you prevent that? Reality forsaken while insanity brings cash. Men with no hearts, no reason to resist evil, unseen danger. Machines with no restraint. Here, yeah, industry replaces reason. The pleasure, it replaces meaning. We endure the day just to taste the evening. Forbidden fruit, and we tasted treason. Little one grows up to her friends, had a face of demons. In the heat, to their skin is eaten. Lonely souls prone to bleed, to their hearts are creasing. Police rush to a scene where a man was beaten. But they don't rush to the clinic when we kill a feed. It's not Coming like a thief in the night when the sun goes down When we turn on the light I see the storm coming by far from the sky But I hear all the nations cry Pray you feel this, the enemy is real, so my weapon is concealed at the range every day, cause I know he wanna kill this, dream that's inside, saying that I might flip, but he a lime in his face, yelling king like tip, but this ain't even the tip of the iceberg, once you see him sink, you will believe that's a sight word, I'm hype off these fight words, but more than that, I'm geeked over the fact the king is coming back, to restore all the empire without an ounce attack, but extreme force, I heard it from the source, yeah, and I'm ready to eat. Full course meal, what an incredible feast. I'm sitting courtside, I got incredible seats. The enemy gotta deal with the feet, boy, my crown too I heavy. I see the next level, but they say I'm not ready. They try to hold me back, yeah. but my crown too heavy. Too heavy, too heavy, too heavy, too heavy. My crown too I heavy. I see the next level, but they say I'm not ready. They try to hold me back, but my crown too heavy.
Yeah. All right, we back with Pastor Harold Franklin from New Creation Christian Center. Uh, not only is he uh, my pastor, he's my father, as I said before. Um, but let's talk about this, man. How did you get involved in ministry? You shared some of the churches you went to. And uh, me growing up and watching you, I know you always were like an elder or a deacon, whatever they wanted to call it. But what made you say, hey, I, I need to step into ministry, even back then and, and, and even now? Well, it's funny because when I first got saved, that was the last thing I wanted to do. I did not want to be a pastor. And part of the reason is because I didn't want people tell, saying things like, oh, he's taking their money and he's doing all this. And so I didn't really want anything to do with the ministry. I, I, was, I planned to be a lawyer. I was going to be a lawyer. And that's what my heart was set on. But over and over again, people kept saying, well, no, God is calling you to the ministry. And I hear that and didn't hear it. And so for years, I just kind of said, no, Lord, I don't want to do that. So about, about 1989, 1988, somewhere around there, uh, my wife and I were having some issues and, and um, I was just broken. I remember driving, going to work, or excuse, I think I was going to school. And I was just crying, crying. I said, Lord, I, you know, I don't know what it means to be called to the ministry. I don't know what that's going to look like. But if you want me to be in the ministry, I'll, I'll surrender. So that was the main point at which I actually accepted my call. Now, what I later happened was I, I started to see that there were different aspects to the ministry. So I, you know, the, you know, the fivefold, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher. So God had said to me or later revealed to me that I was called to be a teacher. I said, well, good. That If I had a teacher, that means I don't have to be a pastor. Yeah. So I took on the teaching role. So I did Sunday school. I did all the peripheral teaching. But I never really preached, so to speak. I think the first time I preached was at the church that I talked that we were going to. And uh, we were given a, a text and we preached for about 10 minutes and it was pretty simple. But after that, the next time I preached, it wasn't until the 90s. So, but as time went on, now I be would... Be careful, you dating yourself. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not ashamed <laughs> to say I'm 50 years oh, old. Yes, so... Uh, so as time went on, God just continued to reveal to me that eventually that would be something that I would be doing. I didn't know if it was going to be a full-time thing, but probably about five or, well, about 10 years ago, we really believed, and I say we, Annis and I, really believed that God was going to launch us out. But at that time, I was not ordained, and every place I had gone to uh, when I was getting ready to get ordained, something would happen, and it didn't happen. So I said, well, Lord, I can't be a pastor until I get ordained, and then I got ordained by uh, Pastor Harvey Drake. And then shortly after that, about oh, maybe in less than a year, we started the, the uh, New Creation Christian Center, and that's kind of how we got into it. But it was kind of a ongoing preparation uh, that got us ready to go out and launch the church that God has called us to at this point. Dope, dope. So talk about being in the ministry. Um, you know, everybody knows about the preaching in front, but just talk to somebody out there that might be an aspiring pastor, some of the things they're going to go through, some of the things they're going to have to deal with, um, and how to stay sane uh, <laughs> as you go through it all. Well, the first thing you have to know is you have to be sure that this is what God has called you to do. Because the first attack that the enemy is going to lay on you is that, are you sure that this is what you're supposed to do? Because things are not going to always look like they look when you see churches that you may say, for instance, grew up in. A lot of the people that say they're going to come with you may not come with you. Um, you may have to start alone. You may have to try to figure out where you're going to be. So there's a lot of little details that can try to cloud the call that God has put upon your heart. So first, you got to be sure, as, as uh, it says in Romans, that uh, Abraham was fully persuaded. You got. 